let's get into uh, Cisco here. Uh, let's break down uh, the earnings. Uh, they also coincidentally had uh, their big EMEA uh, show, their big tent event over there. Boy, during the quiet period. Yeah, well, sometimes when you're talking about tech, it's not about stocks. So, you know, here on the FinTwit side of the world where you and I are kind of constantly forced to swing the pendulum back between talking about what these companies are doing technically and then always back to markets. That's what moves things, of course. But um, look, uh, Cisco is doing the deed. You know, I've said, I kind of say every quarter when companies like Cisco and HPE and IBM and some of these kind of big B2B enterprise companies show up, I say, these are bellwethers. These are the bellwethers for the enterprise. You know, we love talking about the Mag 7, the big hyperscalers. We love talking about the 70, 80, $100 billion CapEx spends. But like the average enterprise and the CIOs and the ITDMs and kind of how they're continuing to think about and invest and build technology that serves these companies today. And so, you know, Cisco is kind of in one of these companies that's been a bit of a meme. And the meme has been somewhat cynical that NVIDIA is the Cisco of the AI, right? You'll see the, you know, they show the curve of the, the rise of the stocks over the period of time and then the fall off that took place when the dot bomb happened with Cisco having been one of the big winners. I, I continue to reject that notion and continue to actually believe that there's a couple of different things happening, but Cisco is performing. Uh, Cisco beat, Cisco raised. Um, and you know, one of the things, Pat, that I kind of come out every quarter and I just kind of beat this drum of, hey, you want to win over the minds and hearts of the investor class right now. You've got to talk about how AI is shaping your business. And finally, you got some, details from Cisco CEO Chuck Robbins and CFO Scott Heron about the business, about AI. So in their business, that's now 56% software. I think it's 56%. Um, they also announced their AI infrastructure orders, which to date is still a smaller number in the grand scheme of the size of Cisco, you know, a company that's pushing north of $50 billion of revenue. But, um, 350 million, Pat, in AI infrastructure orders this quarter. They had 700 million in the first half, and they're expecting now over a billion of orders uh, for the fiscal year uh, for their web scale. And remember, their fiscal year runs mid-year to mid-year. So that means you're accelerating into what will be a new fiscal year. Um, they did see big product order growth in the 29%, 11% uh, if you don't count Splunk. And they were also very um, uh, sort of able to do a bit of a victory lap at how successful and quickly Splunk has been integrated into the business and its growth and its strength. And that certainly added a big software mix to the company. It added a big diversification to the company. Um, and they've been able to take the uh, EPS and make it accretive earlier than they had originally anticipated. Um, they're seeing big growth in ARR, big growth in software. They had the big AI defense. If you didn't check it out, we sat down with both Chuck Robbins and G2 Patel at uh, Davos ahead of this. Um, and they had a lot to be proud of, but you know, across their portfolio, very diversified into that sort of security network, um, extending more and more into compute and now software, Pat. Um, and of course, the company continues to return equity, to sh uh, return money to shareholders. Uh, they returned 2.8 billion this quarter. So um, good strength good diversification, the AI story is starting to come to fruition, Splunk integration is happening, this uh, AI defense offering is certainly going to be important as enterprises start to look at deploying AI at scale. Um, and I like what uh, I like what they're doing and I like how it represents a broadening out that I keep talking about of AI beyond just a couple of infrastructure and cloud players. Yeah, it's a good breakdown, uh, uh, Dan. And uh, as you said, right, a beat, a beat, and a raise. And, you know, the revenue beat was in line with the previous three quarters. And if I average out the EPS beat, it was also uh, aver averaged out. Um, you know, I had expected the stock to fly even bigger. Um, but, you know, there, there was a, a lot of discussion about orders deceleration. And I think, uh, I think Cisco had a good... Um, Good response to that, you know, attributed to the longer AI deal length. Uh, I mean, these deals are, are a lot, are, are very, very complex. The other thing is, is if you look at the last six months of Cisco stock, it's up 41%. Uh, 
uh, it's a real screamer. And by the way, if you you compare that to the mag, the mag seven, Nvidia, AMD, and folks like that, uh, it's 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 very very good uh, uh, with that with that comparison. So uh, a couple of things. First of all, I appreciated uh, had a conversation with Scott Heron after uh, the earnings call. Uh, gave gave some color and some real insights in, into a few things, but some some of the highlights that uh, it, that I I saw. Um, for, uh, first off, one of the challenges that Cisco had uh, previous uh, previous two quarters was, hey, how are you taking advantage of AI? And what I really like is, again, there's only so much real estate you can put into an earnings deck. But I, I still have to give them credit uh, for the way that they they laid that out, uh, which is AI training infrastructure, AI inference, and, and, and AI connectivity. And uh, unsurprisingly, right, you saw their stock bump up uh, uh, since then. I'm not saying, oh, because you added the slide, but I think what investors want is is detail, right? Give Give me the thesis and then show me the numbers, show me some proof of life. That, uh, that, that you have uh, something going on here. Another thing that I appreciated, uh, which was a carryover from EMEA Cisco Live, uh, was uh, uh, AMD DPU integration uh, and HyperShield DPU integration into the 9300 switch uh, and HyperShield uh, integration. Um, so DPU is essentially intelligent networking at the edge. Hyperscalers have had this uh, for years, right? We talk about uh, AWS Nitro. It's very similar to that. This is the version for enterprises. And uh, DPU providers, uh, Marvell has one, AMD has one, and NVIDIA uh, has one. So I, I see this as an untapped opportunity for, uh, for uh, the company. Um, there was some discussion on lower gross margins, but guess what? This is supply chain shifts to get ahead of an expected tariff situation. This is the one thing I really appreciated from my conversation with Scott. As Scott and I went deep, right, on different countries, different um, where they do manufacturing, where they have puts and takes, how they're playing this uh, this chess game, and um, quote unquote, we're eighty uh, percent uh, mitigated. So, uh, best conversation I've had. Right dur during this earnings season and probably last earnings season uh, related uh, related uh, to that. A couple other announcements: uh, Gary Steele moving on. Uh, he's going to be CEO of a non-competing company. I'm not well, actually. I'm not surprised at all that he he's leaving. But I thought this Cisco is going to be his coup de gras, right? Like his his swan song. But but nope. Um, Gary's a very successful. A competent uh, CEO guy, and he's going to do the CEO thing again. So, uh, best of luck. Don't know where he's going yet, but uh, I'm going to be uh, checking uh, checking that out. You could have seen that one a million miles away. I mean, Gary's oh, yeah. a come in, turn the company, sell it, take it public guy. I mean, that when Splunk brought him in, it was all about the transition from him, uh, from Doug Merritt to him, was about getting a deal done. And so he did it at Proofpoint. He's doing it here. He'll do it at the yeah. next thing. So what do you think? Startup, startup, or uh, or or uh, big cap, or I would cap. say it'd be more of a small mid cap. Meaning, like I think it'll probably be a publicly traded company. It just seems to be a bit of his mo, where he's either going to be taking it back private, getting it sold, or potentially, like you said, a company that's close to going IPO and being the kind of guy to get that done. Yeah. Uh, final comment, I'm looking forward to learning more about uh, Silicon One and what they're doing that you might have noticed they're starting to ratchet up uh, the disclosures uh, on that. I thought they should have done this a year ago, but I think it's in a much better uh, place than it is right now.